What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out 10 greatest rivals of Roman Reigns' career. This should be very, very interesting. You know, he's had some great rivals. Me personally, I think his greatest rival still to this day for me will probably be Seth Rollins, only because of the story there and how their rivalry started with rollins betraying the shield it's one of the greatest uh betrayals roman reigns has unfortunately have to had to face and one of the greatest rivalries roman reigns has uh, uh been involved in man their matches they've had have been fantastic uh, whatnot and i still think there's more story for them to tell later down the line uh, if they chose to go back to that but i i don't think the fans would have an issue with it. that's just my personal pick for his greatest rival in his wwe career so we're gonna see if i'm sure seth will be on that list he should be and where he's ranked on their uh personal list appreciate all love and support let's get into it roman reigns has had a lot of poopy rivalries here's 10 yep. good ones don't say that, you'll get demonetized. Here's a real one. You'll remember his <laughs> matches with Brock Lesnar, but you'll find he's had a lot of great rivalries too. Here's 10 of them. What do you mean you've been writing all this down? Pete Quinnell, 2023. Thanks, Pete, for your hard-hitting analysis. Enjoy. He's definitely uh, had uh, a few Brock Lesnar matches that just was not good. Their best, in my opinion, obviously, is the one they had at WrestleMania 31. That was really, really good. That was... In my opinion, I think that's probably their best match they had without any extra stuff. Just actually them having a wrestling match. WrestleMania 31 was their best actual just no gimmick match. But their best gimmick match, obviously, was that last man standing they had at last year's SummerSlam. That's fan that was a fantastic match. So out of all the matches we've had with Brock and Roman, those are the two best matches he is uh they've put on together, man. Treasure to us all. Roman Reigns has indeed had a lot of rivalries over the last decade mm -hmm. in between his many, many interpersonal spats with Brick Lesberg, and now <laughs> with SummerSlam having passed, giving us a neat and tidy place to look back on the Bloodline storyline, which you will be shocked to learn just might feature on this list. I'm mm. Tempest Hailing from Parts of Unknown, and these are the should. 10 greatest rivals of Roman Reigns' career. But before we get on with our list, make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun list just like it. And make sure you check out the latest edition of Survival Series, where all of the people in the PFK HQ try to name every single SummerSlam main event. Number 10, Brock Lesnar. Okay, so we didn't have that many rivalries. WWE yeah. would like to push Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar as one of the most legendary programs in wrestling history. It's not. It isn't, but don't tell WWE that, it's or not. they might run that sh back again. Brock vs. Roman was WWE's break glass in case of an emergency main event after it didn't work back in 2015. Their match at WrestleMania was fantastic, but Facts. the build was rotten and WWE didn't get the Roman coronation they had wanted, nope. so their answer was just to try again. Uh, and again, and again, yeah. and again, and again, and again. Of the seven one-on-one -on -one matches these two have had, including that Mania match, I feel comfortable saying precisely two of them have been yep, good. I just said the it. first one and the last one. Yep. You know, <laughs> the one with the tractor. Yep, uh, that's crazy. Their first match was fantastic. Their last match, fun and fantastic. It's not a great batting average, and it rarely produced the results WWE were looking for. Nope. But when it was great, it was great and it is inarguable that brock will probably go down as roman's most iconic opponent number sure. nine john cena mm. roman reigns was dubbed wwe's top guy in 2015 and once that happened a clash with the previous face that ran the place was inevitable yeah. this is a really weird one to try and look at because on one hand there are a lot of very memorable moments between these two both in 2017 and in 2021 mm -hmm. be it cena eviscerating roman on the mic or making his return at money in the bank yeah. or even their two matches together both of which were top level wwe main event matches but on the other hand i don't think either of those little rivalries are particularly Roman's best moments. No. Yeah, people bring up that Cena promo a lot, but they bring it up by burying Roman six feet deep. And at a time where Roman... Yeah, Roman got cooked. Roman got cooked. Austin Theory got cooked, but right then and there, Roman got eviscerated. But it's so cool to see his growth from when he was facing John Cena then to how comfortable he was when John Cena came back a second time. 
Oh, it was it was a different feel. I appreciated that. It was a very different feel. He seemed comfortable. He seemed in his zone. He knew what he wanted to say. It came off believable. That's the Roman they kind of probably wanted back then, but he was too heavily scripted and still relatively fresh when it comes to, you know, having a, a back and forth promo battle with John Cena himself. He so. wasn't quite able to clap back like he is now. And in 2021, the story consisted of John Cena once again trying to bury Roman by saying that after all of WWE's efforts, Roman still wasn't working, but like he was working. He was the hottest wrestler in the business at the time. Facts. And don't get me started about Cena saying Roman ran Dean Ambrose out of WWE. Promos about hot topics used to get pops made for what should have been the next step in the Hogan Rock, Rock Cena line of torch passing come across as a disjointed story held together by star power and great matches. But hey, you can't say you don't get credit for that. Number eight, Cody Rhodes. I'm not going to spend the bulk of this entry talking about the finish mm. of WrestleMania, the decision we are all still waiting to pay off. Rather, I would love... Yeah, we're still waiting for it to pay off. Uh, I don't know if it will, but we'll see. ...to look at the greatness that came when these two stepped up to one another a decade apart. As a tag team, there weren't that many oh, rivals yeah. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns had while they were in the Shield. That is, until they stepped yep, up on behalf of the Authority yep, to battle this was the good. Rose family. Their matches at Battleground <laughs> and Hell in a Cell were talked about as star-making performances for Cody at the time, Facts. and it set a wonderful foundation for Cody and Roman to build upon when they found each other again as undeniable main event stars. There was skepticism at the time because Cody and Roman didn't have the long-running story that Sami Zayn did, mm -hmm. but yet they managed to tell a gripping story about Dusty Rhodes looking at Roman Reigns as more of a son than he ever did Cody. It was good. Me running would this have been high on the list with a better ending. Could have been yeah. the best Mania main event. I stand by it. No apologies. Oh, for sure. I, I still, if in a, even though I have been liking the Bloodline stuff afterwards, I still think they, they, I know they wanted to go for that record, bro. But I think Cody just, Cody doing it then would have just, it probably would have been one of the greatest WrestleMania moments of all fucking time, bro. But, you know. Number seven, AJ Styles. Somehow, AJ Styles hasn't resurfaced in Roman Reigns' life since he won the Universal title. I know. That would you really sucks. think he would have done, too, considering how spectacular their little feud was in 2016. Roman Reigns was not exactly well-liked by fans after a stinker at WrestleMania 32. Wish they were running like back. all at that matter. So he was in desperate need of a stellar title defense at the time, and when you needed a stellar match in 2016, you picked up the phone and dialed 770 and then whatever AJ Styles number is. This was a fun little <laughs> feud spanning two pay-per-views and involving the debuting Good Brothers backing up AJ and the Usos backing up Roman out of the kindness of their hearts rather than the manipulation that came later. Yeah. And while the weekly TV was good, the best and most memorable thing is that Extreme Rules match. It would be in contention for Roman's best singles match and I cannot stress enough just how badly he needed a match like this. Mm -hmm. It's truly bizarre that AJ and Roman haven't wrestled more but there's still time i don't think roman's losing that title anytime yeah they could do that but once again he's in a few with Karrion cross and they haven't built up aj as someone that you can somewhat believe in taking down uh roman reigns so it, it probably won't happen i'm soon number six kevin owens People love to talk about the WrestleMania trilogies mm -hmm. of Steve Austin and The Rock, Triple H and The Undertaker, to a lesser extent, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. But Kevin Owens, WrestleMania, yeah, he definitely it's does. Royal Rumble trilogy yep. time. Yep. When Kevin Owens was Universal Champion, the big challenger of the winter was Roman Reigns. Their roadblock match was a backdrop for Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho's lovers quarrel, mm -hmm. but that Royal Rumble match is a shark cage sized bundle of fun. Then, when Roman started his, as of this video, literally never-ending title reign, yeah. his first non jay Uso pay-per-view challenger was Kevin Owens. And that Kale shit perfectly was good, served bro. as a rival for Roman. Oh, that was so Jay fun. learned his place within the bloodline, losing to Roman at TLC, on SmackDown, and, of course, at the Royal Rumble. That Rumble match is a Tropicana Field-sized bundle of fun, despite the, the referee ending. stopping his count to free Roman from his restraints. And, of course, we have the finale of our uh -huh. Rumble trilogy this year, a Royal Rumble 2023-related bundle of fun, and definitely the most story-driven of the three. For sure. Even if KO was the supporting actor to Sami Zayn's lead. KO and Roman may not have ever been each other's big climactic rival, but they have always been a reliably great rivalry to get WWE through the winter months. For Number sure. Number five, Braun Strowman. 
I thought this would have placed higher, but it really is a statement on the remaining rivals on this mm -hmm. list. Also, if this was a list of Braun Strowman's rivals, it might have ranked at the top. For the, sure. I'm not finished with you. Yeah. Run Braun, tipping over anything he and the wonderful world of special effects could get their hands on, holding or containing Roman Reigns, was by far the hottest period of Strowman's career. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what a simple and consistent push can do for a fella. And to be fair, Roman and Strowman had much better chemistry in the ring than anyone could have expected, having a great match at Fastlane 2017. Shit, hell, I would love for them to run it back if they could with him. They have opponents he could go through that have history with him. I think that would be great. Because when he came back, he's the reason why, uh, you know, uh, I think Braun Strowman and The Fiend was feuding with each other for the Universal Championship. And he came back in there and wrecked shop on both of them. So he really has some, you know, he could say he has some gripes with Roman as well. And they have history. So I don't know. And then very good matches at Payback and the dumbest pay-per-view name ever. The latter of which saw Roman achieve flight. That was a fun match. 2018 may not have captured the same magic of the year earlier. WWE forcing Strowman into a heel role may have had something to do with that. And the that was finish stupid. of that Hell in a Cell match may have had even more to do with it. Stupid. But of all the names on this list so far, few are as closely tied to Roman as Brawny the Angry Strowman. Number four, Sami Zayn. Uh. In December 2021, Sami Zayn was defeated by Roman Reigns in a Universal Championship match in 15 seconds. And it was yeah. at that moment that I gave up on Sami Zayn ever being anything close to a main event talent again. Yep. Then we finally got a reprieve from Vince McMahon and Triple H began the Sami Zayn babyface restoration project, <laughs> a.k.a. the best period of WWE television I have ever had the chance to see. Oh, that shit was fucking great. Oh, man, Sami, bro. Oh, it was, that was... That was some great shit. <laughs> I didn't even mean to exit full screen mode. Oh, whoa. Uh, damn it. I got to go back. I got to go back. I wasn't trying to do that, y'all. There we go. There we go. Ever being anything close to a main event talent again. Then we finally got a reprieve. Oh, this Vince is great. McMahon and Triple H began the Sami Zayn babyface restoration project, aka the best period of WWE television I have ever had the chance to see. A lot of people have said that Sami Zayn was never the main character of the Bloodline story, and ultimately that has been proven by WWE, hence Sami not being even higher on this list. But for yeah. a stretch of time, Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns was the greatest thing in all of wrestling. The Facts. run of the trial of Sami Zayn to the Royal Rumble bloodline Facts. split to Sami in Montreal for SmackDown and Facts. Elimination Chamber is one of the all-time great stretches a WWE feud has ever had. Yep. Roman Reigns' three-year reign as champion would not be seen as half as good as nope. it is without Sami Zayn. In yep. real that Sami Zayn storyline saved the bloodline story as a whole because people were kind of getting tired of it. It was like, ah, it's the same thing. What's going to happen? It needs to be freshened up. And Sammy being interjected and it organically growing brought just new life to the bloodline. Now they got to find a way to, you know, you know, continue that momentum because now people, especially the way SummerSlam ended, now people are, are kind of getting tired of this bloodline thing again. So they got to find a way to stretch this out for people to care all the way to next year's WrestleMania, so. Really, that is the biggest contribution Sammy has made as a rival to Roman. We're in the top tier, folks, and we've still got three more to go. Number three, Daniel Bryan. Mm. Thankfully, by the end of it all, I do believe Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan will be linked together positively in the minds of fans. For and sure. That very much wasn't the case at one point. Nope, it People wasn't. <laughs> may be quick to look at 2015 as the start of Bryan and Roman's story, but nay, considering Bryan was in Roman's very huh. first WWE match and one of the men Roman beat to win his first ever championship, Roman and Bryan have been linked since the very start. Then, of course, you did have Roman taking Brian's perceived spot by winning uh -huh. the 2015 Royal Rumble, which is an interesting thing to talk about on a positive list, but it did lead to an excellent match between them at Fastlane. Yeah. For many years, it seemed that would be their one and only pay-per-view singles match, but when Brian returned, we finally got the continuation of their rivalry. It's a shame it had to happen during the bad times, but what can you do? Yeah. Fastlane 2021, a great match. Woo. WrestleMania 37, one of the, the great greatest. main events ever. Yep. And then Daniel Bryan's final ever match before being deleted forever. Mm -hmm. A great rivalry that hopefully can outshine the rubbish that was the 2015 Royal Rumble now and forevermore. Number two, Fair point. Seth Rollins. Ooh. To this day. I thought it would have been number one for me. Seth is, is number one, bro. That Yes, his greatest rival. 
That is his greatest. That Roman Reigns antithesis, the other side of him, like his his arch nemesis, will always be Seth. And it's 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 pretty much like the the stone the Stone Cold and the Rock. Like they are always going to be arch rivals, no matter what. And this is that for this generation. Roman Reigns and Seth. It makes sense. It just does. In my opinion, he's his greatest rival. I don't think Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns have had their climactic match. I thought it was going to be at the Royal Rumble in 2022, but then that wonky ass finish happened and we're still waiting for Seth's rematch. Even despite this, however, Seth Rollins is still unquestionably Roman Reigns' oldest and perhaps greatest rival. Mm -hmm. The man that set all of Roman's betrayal-based paranoia in motion yeah. with one swift chair shot to the back. He is the mountain that Roman has yet to truly overcome, having never gotten over that betrayal. Yeah. Sure, they may have had half a dozen S.H.I.E.L.D. reunions that may make you think otherwise, but that chair-shaped knife in the back can be seen as the cause of a lot of the character development we have seen since. Mm -hmm. Maybe when these two inevitably main event WrestleMania in a few years, we can put Seth in the top spot, but until then, that distinction goes to number 1.5, the fans. <laughs> Funny little prank I did. I often get requests in the comments to have top entries on this list be things like creative, themselves, putting someone over. And that's not really my style, but in this case, I made an exception. Because when the fans still hate you as a baby face that literally beat cancer, that's when it is personal. You know what? On the cool, we are his greatest rivals. This nigga legit defeated cancer, came back. He was getting some good cheers. It didn't take that long at all before you heard the boo. <laughs> they didn't give a fuck, bro. All right, cool. You beat cancer. We still don't give a F, man. <laughs> Roman's relationship with WWE fans will forever be studied, but in terms of an actual wrestling rivalry, the top spot has to go to number one, his family. The greatest <laughs> thing to ever happen to Roman Reigns was turning That's a on good his one. family. There is not enough time in the day to go over the entire Brock That's a good story, one. Even though a year of it was spent on Brock I Lester, still give it to Seth, though. He's number 10 now. But, but the I character get it. work between Roman, Jimmy Uso, Jay Uso, and Solo Sokoa is some of the best in WWE history. And without a doubt, the best of Roman Reigns' career. The Clash of Champions match and the mm -hmm. Hell in a Cell match that followed serving as the launching pad for this fact. Which, once again, still kind of... It's kind of... Head scratching inducing for my boy Jimmy out here to screw over Jay, knowing what he's been through with Roman. Yes, they have been planting a siege for a while. I just think the turn was just a little bit too soon. Way too soon, in my opinion. I think they turned Jimmy too soon here. Um, there's still more. They still could have built it up more. That's a WrestleMania match, in my opinion. But, you know. Action leading to years of slow burn character development before Jey Uso finally got his next match at SummerSlam just days ago. This is the kind of story that proves that WWE can be better, that a long term storyline can work, and is the thing that WWE fans will throw their popcorn at the wall in excitement watching. And the craziest part mm -hmm. of it all is I don't think this storyline will ever really end. There is so much story left to be told and matches to be had before Roman For sure. is over. And there may be no more room to climb on this list, but maybe when we do a greatest WWE rivalries of all time list, this will have climbed to the top of that as well. But until then, it'll have to settle for being the very best rivalry that Roman Reigns has ever had. And that's our list. Make sure. Very interesting. I, I would still, even though I love this, I get it only because, you know, we're still, we're still building up to it or whatnot uh you know to you know where where the story may go but i'm, I'm still giving it to seth seth for me what he did with the shield or whatnot and and that the 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 chair shot heard around the world and how kind of if they really played into it which for a little bit they did it's molded how roman reigns is now and I, I, I really, you know, I really do like that they, you know, they kind of teased that and talked about it a little bit when he was feuding with Seth. And it's always Seth that gives him issues. That's why I, I, I appreciate that because it's always him. So at some point later down the line, we will get 
a Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins to main event WrestleMania later down the line. I'm all for it. Comment down below. Let me know um, who do y'all feel like is Roman Reigns' uh, greatest rival? If it wasn't on this list or if it was on this list, how would you, who would be the number one pick for you? Uh, mine's the Seth Rollins. Y'all let me know who y'all uh, would think would be the, his greatest rival. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K and I'm still here in the speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.